Now that we've got the grain out, separated off of the cob or out of that hole, we want to get it down to the cleaning shoe. So first step of that, we're going to get that grain down to the shoe augers. We need to make sure those shoe augers are in good condition. We need to make sure we don't have a sharp auger or a wavy looking auger that's going to damage the grain, cut that grain. And also we want to check the condition of the, the front and rear auger bearings. That bearing there has way too much play. It's going to allow too much wear on the grain and damage. It's going to allow wear on the auger, on the auger trough. And if it gets bad enough, we could lose grain out that front end because that grain is going to fall through that bearing. Once that grain's off the, off the shoe augers, drops down into the cleaning area, we've got sieve and chaffer. Chaffer's going to be on top, sieve is going to be down at the bottom. Make sure your louvers aren't damaged, broken, missing. Uh, make sure they're not bent and everything's in proper working condition. Everything's cleaned out, make sure there's no trash from the previous crop or the previous season and give it a nice open area for that, that brush of fan air coming from the cleaning fan to clean out that grain and get rid of that chaff. With the chaffer removed from the combine, we can get you a better shot. What we're looking for here, any damage to the louvers, it's going to create too much open space and grain can get through there, but also the chaff could as well. Depending on your machine and your options, you may have different dividers. You may have an active terrain system, so each different chaffer setup is going to refer to your machine and your setup. As long as you don't have any bent louvers, make sure they're not missing. If any louver is missing, it's going to allow any chaff to drop through into that sieve and possibly into your grain tank. Make sure your fingers are all in good working order, none are missing, and just make sure there's no cracks in your frame on the chaffer. Same, similar situation for the sieve. Sieve is just down below that chaffer, doing the same job. So we want to make sure all the louvers on the chaffer and the sieve are all in good working order and in the right proper place. As mentioned, the cob deflector door, this is in the down or the corn position. With this door down, any cobs coming into the chopper will go out the machine. If the chopper should happen to throw a cob back, it's going to hit that deflector door and, as it says, deflect it out the machine. If this is in the up position with corn, the cob can possibly deflect back up in and cause damage to your chaffer. So the setting this one here is in is in the down corn position. For small grain and soybeans, you want that in the raised position to allow greater flow for the higher chaff going through the machine and out the rear. A couple different chopper differences. Again, refer to your machine of your setup, what you may have. What we're looking for is make sure your chopper rotating knives are in good working condition. Once the hardened wear strip on the chopper knife is wore down and you get into a situation like this, that chopper knife is going to wear incredibly quick and it's not going to do a very good job of chopping that stalk and residue as it comes through. Stationary knives, make sure they're not broke or missing. Those are reversible. You have a sharp edge on both sides when they're new, so you can wear them on one side, drop this pin out, switch the blade over to the other side and get a fresh new blade on there. Damage, you want to make sure you're pulling these stationary knives out when you're harvesting corn. If you do not, <clears throat> you will break these knives out and you could damage the bottom floor of the chopper and cause extensive damage. Depending on your machine age and setup, the older machines have greasable bearings on the chopper. So again, refer to your owner's manual and your grease circ display on the combine to see where those grease points may be. Now we've got the grain through the machine, we've separated, we need to get rid of, do, rid of that residue. So depending on your machine and your tillage practices, we have four different options. We have the power cast tailboard, which is going to allow a larger spread of that heavy mat. Power cast is good up until the 45 foot platforms, 12 and 16 real corn heads. As far as wear points, make sure your paddles are in good condition. Once the paddles start wearing, it's going to determine how far you can throw that material. Um, make sure they're nice and square, not worn down to get a nice good even throw of that material going out the rear of the machine. Standard tailboard, you can adjust those louvers as needed for the width of your platform or corn head. And here we're just looking at the, make sure there's no damage to these tailboard deflectors. Make sure they're in good working order, nice and square, plenty of metal there to deflect all your chaff as needed. Make sure there's no cracks in the tailboard and make sure the crop's going fully out the machine and not getting caught up in any cracks or missing pieces in that tailboard. 
Now this is the standard tailboard. We talked about the power cast. The third option in the chopper is the premium with the chop to drop option. The chop to drop allows a door in the up, upper rear end of the machine to open up for anybody wind rowing crop and trying to bale that crop for bedding purposes or feeding purposes. The chop to drop and the power cast will use the metal fingers here to spread the material out and the chop the drop option open on the door will allow you to still chop but make a nice windrow for that machine.